thank you for joining me to learn about When Spheres Collide, Fostering Interdisciplinary Collaboration. As I approach this topic, I think of it under the lens of music and blank, and then I fill in the blank with the different subjects that I cover in the music classroom, such as music and literature, music and science, music and social studies, music and math, music and art, music and musical games. For each of these, I have five activities. I am going to give you a quick overview of the activities that I do for each subject area. This is going to be very quick. First, we look at folk tales. You'll notice here that I have an excerpt from a folk tale from Haiti, The Magic Orange Tree. And I would look at the folk tale and find things in it that I can make musical or that the students might be able to dramatize. This folk tale happens to have a song in it, so I wrote a simple tune to go along with it. Another thing I use in my classroom are popular songs. The students really get engaged with these. However, I put a twist on it, and I might have them, as in this example, look for the pronoun types in the, in the song. And I will bring in a graphic that their teacher has given me so that they can remind themselves of the pronouns types that they've learned about in class. I love using poems. Poems just really lend themselves to musical representation. This is one of my favorites, Grandpa Dropped His Glasses. And you'll notice that throughout the course of this poem, we would add different things to it. The first time through, we just recite it rhythmically. The second time through, we find the rhyming words. They have a box around them. The third time through, we find all the times that the word purple is used. And then finally, we find the words that are described by the word purple. For each of these, we add body percussion, and later as an extension, we add rhythm instruments so that we can play it as a rhythmic performance. I love books, don't you? These are three of my favorites, and I use them as an example of how I have incorporated books into my music classroom. Too much talk, I turned that into a reader's theater. And it's wonderful because it has so many characters and a lot of repetition and we can add movements and instruments to it. Mortimer is a favorite for the younger students, learning up and down and all kinds of sounds. I love giraffes can't dance because this giraffe has his own unique way of dancing and he learns that he doesn't fit in the other types of dancing. But what I love about this book is it brings in different genres of music and I can share those with the students. And then we also have the moral story that we can all be who we need to be and who we are. I love creating Mad Libs. These are things that I did when I was a young child and I remember just laughing about them. I take a text such as this biography by Bernstein about Bernstein and I take out words and I use those words and I gather suggestions from the students then we read what is often a very comical and funny rendition of this biography. You can use this with any story or any text. Moving on to science. Of course there are a lot of connections with science and music. This one gives you an example of a lesson on hearing. And I like to match that up with the tuned water glasses. The children are just amazed the, of the different pitches that in the songs that they can create using the water glasses. There are often video lessons. The students like the animated lessons. But I also like some live action ones, such as the one here, Bill Nye the Science Guy and his Science of Music video. I love found sound. 
This is something that allows the children to explore the different types of sounds that an object that is not an instrument can make. I will base these off of the Blue Man Group or Stomp Out Loud and give the children an object and say, now, how many sounds can you make with this object? I don't do worksheets very often, but it is an option. During the month of February, when it is Jump Rope for Heart, and the students are learning about the heart in their science classes, I have a song on heart anatomy, and we will identify the different parts of the, the heart on this graphic here. Then we also have a vocabulary worksheet where the students are given terms that we have studied in our class and then they match them up with their definitions. This could be used as an assessment. I don't use a lot of science songs in my classroom. However, I do try to find them to share with the classroom teachers so that they can use them in their classroom. This one of the scientific method is a very important one that our fifth graders like to sing. And then I like the song Glucose Glucose, which is a play on the song Sugar Sugar. And I shared that with the teacher as they were learning about this. Let's move on to social studies. Social studies is so such a rich area. And this is one that I find I fall back upon many times in my classroom. The first set of activities I call the homegrown activities. Why? Because many times we don't pay attention to the music that is right here around us. For that reason, I found something musical for every 50 states in the United States. And these are three examples, and of course they are not the only examples for their state, but Bruce Springsteen is a proud person from New Jersey, and so I use him to represent New Jersey. And did you know that Ohio had a state rock song? It was Hang On Sloopy. And I like using that because there's an ostinato in the song, and I have the students listen for the ostinato, and then we perform bob body percussion with it. And then who can forget Motown? Motown made Detroit part of the map and it represents Michigan. Something else that I look at are the folk songs and the folk dances from the United States. And these are just a few of the books that I have gleaned folk songs to use in my classroom. And of course, we have representative folk dances such as the square dance and the Virginia reel, and we do these in our classroom as well but we wouldn't have the rich heritage that we have had it not been for all of the world folk songs that were brought to the United States. And so I make sure that we study songs from around the world as well as the dances from other lands because my students are representative of those other countries and I want to share that with them, with their classmates. As we look at math, math is all about numbers. Who likes math? I loved math. And one of the ways that I incorporate math into the music classroom is through number songs. Now I'm not talking about the, the children's rhymes, one, two, tie my shoe. I like to bring in other songs because these songs bring in other areas of music that I can talk about. My students love the Twilight series of movies, and so they love the song, A Thousand Years. I also take every chance I can to introduce my students to Peter, Paul, and Mary, so their song, 500 Miles, is one that I love to share. Finally, we have 525,600 minutes. How many of you know that song? That song has such a strong message in addition to having a number in the title. But it also is a way that I can link in with Broadway musicals. So see, even though I'm doing another subject, I'm able to tie it in to something in music class. 
we move all the time in music class. We make it fun and silly sometimes. For example, the, child, the children's game Hokey Pokey becomes the shapes Hokey Pokey. And the children will have each of these shapes and when we ask for the circle, they put it in, they take it out, and then they shake it all about. And for the older students, we do angle dances. As they're learning about angles in math class, we do dances where they must incorporate the different angles into their dance. And this really challenges them not only to remember those angles and how they should look, but also how they should get their bodies to move to the music in order to make it look like a smooth presentation. Again, we have some worksheets. On the left, you have an example of one that I might give pre-K or kindergarten students, where they have musical instruments and they count the ones in each line and they put the number they find in the box on the right. And then for the older students, we might do this musical math where they have to add the notes together to get the correct answer. I love games, don't you? I would find some musical math games and I, my students have devices and they enjoy this music shop multiplication and musical mix up because it lets them play a game and they don't realize they're also learning. They're learning about instruments and they're also doing some math there. Did you know that sorting and categorizing is one of the early math skills? This is something that I will use with those cumulative songs. I love using cumulative songs and putting them in order. I love sorting instruments into the woods, the metals, and the skins. How can you use those in your classroom? I did not like word problems when I was growing up, but it's a lot more fun when it's on a music topic. This one, of course, is for an upper level student because it talks about fractions. We see the fractions of one third, two fifths, and three fifths. So it really makes them think. Art ties in so well to music class. I love using paintings, if only for the students just to enjoy and appreciate the art, but also to draw from the artwork. What instruments do you see? How do we play those instruments? On the pictures on the bottom, the lower left, I might show them this picture and ask them to write a story about what happened before this picture and what happened after this picture. It just offers so many wonderful prompts. Sometimes I will use classical music to introduce them to some artwork. For example, we have the Moonlight Sonata serenading Van Gogh's paintings. We have Wagner's music with some paintings. And then we have a Bach piece that accompanies 500 years of female portraits in Western art. It just gives a good tie-in to classical music and artwork that they see on their screens. I love folk art. I mentioned earlier that we do world folk music and dances. Something else that I do as an extension of that is folk art from the countries that we explore. We have a beaded bottle here from Haiti, Rose Malling from when we studied the Scandinavian musics and from Peru, this tableau. Other songs just lend themselves to doing an art project. Recently, I shared with my students a non-bullying song called Boomerang, and so we made our own boomerangs. Then we have the Jonas Brothers Love Bug song, so we created Love Bugs. We were studying a piece of music that had a theme and variations form, and I asked my students, my older students, to create theme and variations, and they would do that in a grid such as pictured here. Of course, there is the collage. Many times I would have my students use their devices to create word collages. 
These might be musical words that we have on our word wall, or it might be other words that they know, like music note names or dynamics, etc. And they would include that in a word collage that they create on their device. My older students do a study of the music that means something to them, and they collect album covers, and they create collages of those album covers because those collages tell me so much about the students and the music that they're listening to. Let's get moving. Musical games offer so many opportunities. Pictured here is a game called SWAT that we play, as well as a relay race. I like quiz games. Music Jeopardy has one, is one that, that mimics the Jeopardy game show, and it's one that's been along, around for a long time. I also go back to my youth when I think about the game around the world. We would use math flashcards, and we would play a game called Around the World. Well, I just transformed that into music around the world and use music flashcards. I like when we can play games that put things in students' hands using manipulatives, such as this dominoes game or a card game. For large groups, we play music bingo. We have such fun. Who knew that winning a new pencil would be such a big deal? And then the cup game. I have done the cup game from first grade on up. Of course, with first graders, I modified it quite a bit, but they just love being able to do the cup game. And then for small groups, we have small game boards that they can do. They can do them individually with a partner or in centers with three or four friends. Thank you for listening to my presentation.